Now as the two men continued walking and talking together, Faithful happened to look back and noticed another man walking towards them. Look who it is, he said. My good friend Evangelist. Yes, and my good friend too. He is the one who first pointed me towards the narrow gate. Peace be with you, Evangelist said when he had caught up with them at last. How have you been, my friend, since we last met? What have you met with, and how have you behaved yourselves? Then Christian and Faithful told him of all that had happened to them along the way, and how with great difficulty they had come this far. I am so glad, said Evangelist, not that you have had trials, but that you have been victors, and also that in spite of your many weaknesses, you have continued on the path to this very day. The crown is before you, so run that you may obtain it, for you are not yet out of the gunshot of the devil. Christian thanked Evangelist for his encouraging words and asked him to speak further with them. He knew that Evangelist could warn them about the things that might happen to them and tell them how to resist and overcome. My sons, Evangelist said, you have heard that through many tribulations you must enter the kingdom of heaven. You have found it to be true already and there is yet more to come. You will soon enter a town. In that town, you will be surrounded by enemies. Be sure that one or both of you will be killed. Be faithful unto death, and the Lord will give you a crown of life. I saw in my dream that they soon entered that town. It was called Vanity. Now the townspeople hold a fair all year long, and it is called Vanity Fair. Everything sold there is worthless. This fair is not new. I will tell you how it started. Almost 5,000 years ago, there were other pilgrims walking to the celestial city. Three demons named Beelzebub Apollyon and Legion noticed the pilgrims and saw that their path led through the town of Vanity. The demons decided to set up a fair that would last all year round and sell all sorts of vanity. And so here you can buy houses and land, as well as sinful pleasures of all sorts. You can always see jugglers and games and plays, as well as stealing murder and lying. As I said, the way to the Celestial City runs straight through this fair, and as Christian and Faithful passed through, they caused quite a commotion. For first of all, they were dressed differently than everyone else, which caused many to stare at them. Secondly, they did not really care for the things that were sold at the Vanity Fair. Whenever they were asked to try something, they would put their fingers in their ears and cry, Turn away my eyes from beholding vanity! Then they would look up in order to show that they were only concerned with the treasures that were waiting for them in heaven. And then someone yelled out, What will you buy? They looked straight at them and said, We buy the truth. At that, a crowd of men and women gathered round them. Some laughed, some yelled, and others began to hit Christian and faithful. Such a riot broke out that the Great One of the Fair ordered his most trusted friends to arrest Christian and faithful and to find out what they had done to cause so much commotion. 
Where have you come from? What are you doing here? They asked. We are pilgrims and strangers in this world, and we are travelling to our own country. We haven't done anything to cause a riot here. But no one believed them. They only thought that they were madmen. And then they were beaten, smeared with dirt, and thrown into a cage right outside where everyone could see them. The people of the fair were allowed to do anything they wanted to the poor pilgrims. To be sure, some laughed, some called them names, and some threw stones at them. Christian and faithful, however, only said good things to the people and showed kindness to the ones who hurt them. They also remembered. How evangelists had said that one of them would have to die in Vanity Fair. Secretly, each man wished that he would be the one to die, knowing that he would then be carried directly to the celestial city. Believing that the all-wise God controls everything, they put their lives in His hands and waited to see what would be done to them. The men of Vanity Fair brought Christian and Faithful out of the cage and into the courtroom in order to condemn them. The judge's name was Lord Hategood, and this is what he said: "These men are enemies of Vanity Fair. They cause riots, and they have even persuaded some of our people to follow their dangerous opinions and to disobey the laws." Of Prince Beelzebub. Then Faithful stood up and answered, "I have only set myself against things which are already against God. I have not caused any riots, because I am a man of peace. And as for your prince, since he is the enemy of my Lord, I defy him and his angels." Then. The judge made a proclamation that anyone who had something to say against Faithful should come quickly. Three witnesses came in. Their names were Envy, Superstition, and Pickthank. Envy spoke up first. I have known this man for a long time, and will say, upon my oath, before this honourable judge. That he is a hold, give him his oath. So they gave Envy his oath, and made him promise that he would only tell the truth. And then he continued, "This man is one of the vilest men in our country. He does not care for our prince, our people, our laws, or our customs." He does all that he can to convince us of his opinions, which he calls principles of faith and holiness. Once I even heard him say that you could not be a Christian and obey the laws of our country. Have you any more to say? I could, Your Honour, say much more. Only I do not wish to be tedious to the court. If after the other gentlemen have given their testimony, we still need more evidence to condemn him to death, I will say more. So he was told to stand by, while superstition came forward. He also promised to tell only the truth. This is what he told the judge about faithful. Your Honour, I do not know this man, and I do not want to, but I do know that he is a harmful, nasty fellow. Just the other day, I heard him say that our religion was worthless, and that no one who worshipped as we do here in vanity 
could please God. Superstition sat down, and then Pickthank came forward to give his testimony. Your Honour, he began, I have known this man for a long time, and have heard him rail against our noble prince Beelzebub. He has also said terrible things about our prince's honourable men, namely, Lord Old Man, Lord. Luxurious, Lord, desire of vain glory, Lord, lechery, and so having greedy. He said that if it were up to him, all of these good men would be thrown out of town. And not only that, Your Honour, but he has called you, his judge, an ungodly villain. You renegade! You heretic! You traitor! Have you heard what these honest gentlemen have said about you? May I speak a few words in my own defence? Faithful replied. You don't deserve to live. You should be killed right now, right where you stand. Yet, so that everyone may see how gentle we are towards you. Let us hear what you have to say. To what Mr. Envy and Mr. Superstition have said about me, I answer only this: any customs or any worship that do not agree with the Word of God are against Christianity and cannot please God. As to what Pickthank has said, I answer that Prince Beelzebub and all of his helpers are more fit to be in hell than in this town. And so the Lord have mercy on me. Then the judge spoke to the jury, who all this time had been listening and watching. Gentlemen, it is now up to you whether to kill Faithful or to let him live. Mr. Blindman, the foreman, said, "I clearly see that this man is a heretic." Mr. No Good said, "Away with such a fellow!" Yes," said Mr. Malice. "I hate the way he looks. Hang him! Hang him!" said Mr. Heady. "Hanging is too good for him," said Mr. Cruelty. And then, after beating Faithful and torturing him. They burned him at the stake. But as soon as Faithful's enemies had finished with him, a chariot and horses came out from behind the crowd, and carried Faithful up through the clouds, and directly to the gate of heaven. Christian was sent back to prison, but God, who controls all things, allowed him to escape. And so he left Vanity Fair, and made up a song about his friend Faithful, who was now living in the Celestial City.